Lyra? Lyra! Bonbon bon yelled in consideration, having already been alerted by the blood-curdling scream from downstairs. Lyra finally stirred awake, breathing rapidly in fear. Her body was drenched in cold sweat. Her heart was racing at a rate that would be considerably nearly fatal. Lyra struggled to come back to reality, as Bonbon bon did her best to comfort her beloved. Lyra caught sight of her beloved Bonbon bon and quickly pulled her into an embrace. Bonbon bon accepted and rubbed her hoof along Lyra's back. I'm sorry, Lyra apologized, sobbing in a mix between horror as she had an experience with Bonbon's concern. Shh, you don't need to be sorry, Lyra, Bonbon bon claimed gently. What did Celestia happen? Lyra attempted to explain what had caused her to fall in the state of despair and pure terror, but as just as she was about to speak, all the events that had just occurred had escaped her. She tried to remember, but it was all too giant blank, and Lyra couldn't explain why she couldn't remember something so traumatizing. Baffled and unable to process anything, Lyra responded with the only answer she could give in that moment. I don't remember, Lyra replied continuing to hold on to Bonbon bon close, not wanting to ever let her go. Bonbon bon followed, unsure of what to think of the situation. I'm here as long as you need me to be, Bonbon bon said calmly, continuing to hold Lyra. The embrace went on for an hour, before Lyra even dared try going in anything but back to sleep. When she did, Bonbon bon stayed. She refused to leave her beloved's side. Two days had passed, and Lyra's condition only seemed to get worsened. The nightmares had grown more haunting, almost seemingly realistic in nature. The torture methods had become more violent and grotesque, causing Lyra to jolt awake in the urge to vomit each time. As an attempt to help sleep drive the unicorn to get some much needed rest, Bonbon bon given Lyra some medication that helps ponies sleep, but it had not been effective and even in the slightest. Lyra's nightmares continued each time and Bonbon bon would question her on the current nightmares. Lyra's thoughts would immediately go blank. It made no sense. As almost traumatized as nightmares normally burn into victims' memories. Bonbon bon all knew too well. All she had to do was her own fair share of terrifying nightmares. However, the most she had ever experienced was when she awoke and was in cold sweat, heavy breathing, an increase in her heart rate. Never she had awoken to screaming so loud that it sounded like she was being murdered or tortured. Nor would the urge to vomit her sweating so badly if it had been a spot in sheets. She had become concerned with her beloved Lyra. Afraid that one of these times she would never wake up, medication had not helped, nor warm a relaxing bath with the massage afterwards. Bonbon bon had run out of options and had scheduled for Lyra to a doctor's appointment hoping a reason for those sudden nightmares can be found. In two days of no sleep, Lyra had become paranoid as well, afraid to even be around or near Bonbon. Bon. Even Bonbon bon had seen a change in Lyra's approach. Seeing every time she attempted to kiss Lyra, hug her, or even get close, Lyra would turn away. It hurt Lyra the most, but something told her that she needed to remain distant. Otherwise, her nightmares would become reality. Another sign that told her to stay away was the fact that what started out as a side effect from the hangover that had become a constant presence in her mind. She feared that she might have been going crazy, but in her mind she wanted to believe it was just some sort of sickness she had caught. But that still didn't explain why she had started as a whisper and had become more audible. That it had increased by any time she got near Bonbon. Bon. Why was this happening? Lyra wondered. More importantly, was it too late? She prayed to Celestia that this doctor could find the cause of this horror whole ordeal. She just wanted things to go back to normal, for her to be able to live a happy life with her beloved Bonbon, bon, for the most terrifying and most haunting nightmares for it to end, for the damn reoccurring voice in her head to be silenced. That was all she could do. Pray and hope. As she made her way through the double glass doors of Ponyville Hospital, the waiting room was packed with ponies of all ages, which was not, uh, not uncommon at all. Luckily for Lyra, she didn't have to wait too long, mainly 10 minutes after doing all the paperwork. It turned out most of the waiting room patients were already administered to the hospital, 
doing her daily exercise to avoid blood clots in their forelegs. Lyra was called back quickly, being led by a nurse that she was familiar with, Nurse Redheart, one of the hospital's kindest yet strict nurses on staff. She led to a smaller room after being weighed and given the usual vital examination. With a few words and assuring smile, Lyra was left alone, fidgeting with her hooves while examining the interior of the room and a chart describing a labeling antinomity of a pony's body. Between her fidgeting and examining, the reoccurring voice in her head made itself known. She couldn't made it out, but what that being said, only it was more mild than usual. Lyra didn't make any movements, nor did she state anything towards the voice, think it was just her mind playing tricks on her. She only continued to fidget and examine the cart, only waiting for the doctor to arrive. It was about only another five minutes before the sliding door to the room slid open, entering down a coated stallion brown with a chocolate brown mane and blue eyes. The name on the tag was Dr. Bronston, which Lyra quickly recognized as the former Cantala Morgan medical examiner. He had always returned to simple medical practice before such an occurrence in the Motorog. He found it bizarre. Lyra remembered reading the story in the newspaper. He even found it bizarre herself. Good afternoon, Mr. Hartstring, Miss Hartstrings, Bronston said professionally. Good afternoon, doctor, Lyra replied. So, what seems to be the problem? He asked with concern, grabbing a spare mini notepad book and pencil. I'm not sure, Lyra explained. In the last two days, I have been restless due to nightmares that I've been having. I wake up screaming, sweating to death, and my heart rate is at the rate that most doctors would consider the range of near fatal. I see. Don't take this personally. It's just part of my job. But prior to these nightmares, did you partake in drug activity? Asked Bronston. What? No, Lyra retorted. All I did was having two glasses of wine. All right, all right, Miss Heartstrings. I'm only asking because, well, it says I have to, okay? Right. I'm sorry, Doc. Lyra apologized, confused on why she had acted so angrily. Apology accepted. Bronston accepted. Now, you say you have wine prior, right? You are aware alcohol beverages can cause nightmares, right? Yes, I am, Lyra replied. However, that was two days ago, and the beverage has since then made its way out of my system. Miss Heartstrains, I'm going to have to ask you to calm down, or I will have to escort you out of the building, Bronston warned. Lyra paused, taking a second to calm down. She had once again snapped unintentionally and didn't know why. It could have been due to lack of sleep, but normally she was conscious of her actions. She would just give her best answer. Sorry, Doc, I haven't been able to sleep for two days, so I snap easily, she said apologetically. Understood. Just understand that I'm trying to do what I'm told to do, Bronston claimed. All right, carry on, Lyra composed. I'll do my best to answer. Good, Bronston finalized, continuing to follow the asking questions as the sheet she gripped. Lyra explained the details of the nightmares escaped her mind whenever she tried to explain what had occurred. Along with the voice in her head that proposed gibberish that she couldn't understand, both of those claims had Bronston Maze raised an eyebrow in consideration. Unsure whatever Lyra was telling the truth, or if it was deprivation of sleep, was causing her to say the things that were complete nonsense. That wasn't his job, though. His job was to find a solution. All right, Miss Heartstrains, I'm going to have to order you a stress test, Bronston explained as confidently as he could. After that, I'm going to do some blood work order, an MRI, and a mental physical test done as well. Lyra wasn't too satisfied with the all unnatural ne necessary test being proposed by Bronston, but at this point she felt like she had no choice but to follow the doctor's orders. She nodded her head in agreement as Bronston finished writing down some things on his notepad. Once finished, setting the pencil down between his ear and skull, he turned to Lyra with a smile. Don't worry, Miss Heartstrings. We will get you better, he reassured. I hope you are right. Many hours have passed endless testing of what seemed like forever. Lyra sat and wait for the results. She hadn't been cured, seeing the voice still remained. Speaking in the same gibberish, as the clock ticked, she attempted to make a sense of what her voice was saying, but it was too muffled and distorted 
to even hear her clearly and or fluently. All it was causing her was a headache, so she rubbed her temples to try and soothe the aching. Once again, it wasn't effective at all as it seemed to only antagonize the voice even more. The sound of the door sliding open once more, the mare stepped out of her trans concentration, feeling her nerves settle and her headache subside as Bronstorn take a seat. Setting a large stack of papers and documents who are into the tabletop, Lyra sat in surprise, hoping that somewhere in that large stack was the answer was that into Celestia. What was going on was her body's state. Anything, Doc? questioned Lyra in the form of worrisome in anticipation. I'm afraid not, Miss Heartstrains. I've checked your results, and everything seems normal. Your temperature is safe, is a safe 98.3 degrees. All of your vitals are healthy, and your mental state is normal, as normally it seems to be, Dr. Bronston assured, cycling through this stack and organizing the papers on the tabletop. I'm sorry that I couldn't help you find anything, Miss Heartstrains. I've literally done all I could do to help, and I, at the end... I believe your answer doesn't lie in the medical field, which is why I recommend seeing a psychiatrist for your current predicament. Unexpected terrifying nightmares and a voice in your head seems more like a psychological issue than a medical issue. I am truly sorry, but that is all I can do. Lyra sat speechless. She had come to her hoping for her answer of whatever may be wrong with her. But there she was back at square one, with no clue on what to do except follow Dr. Bronson's advice. In some manner, she felt betrayed and angry, like if she was more Bronson Stone can do. He was just busy with her waiting for his paycheck to who want to help solve her mystery behind her situation. With those thoughts, something happened that Lyra didn't even expect. The same chilling voice reverberated in her skull, but this time it was different. The gibberish she had heard before was now clear as day. The reverberating voice muffled out anything Bronston could have said. As Lyra listened, listening to what seemed like a mixture of whispering and some form of conflict, she didn't even know what to do, feeling some invisible force telling her to ignore the whispering and get out of there. She felt a sudden urge to strong overcome her body as she listened more to the voices in her head. The urge felt like pure hatred. As Lyra felt her sanity start to fall in the comatose state and her personality had just begun to change more male violent mindset she had stayed with the doctor with daggers of rage and perseverance noticing Bronston's pencil settled on the tabletop the volume of the voices increased and even a comatose state Lyra could make out the dialogue of the voices now the dialogue just made her shudder and immediately sent her into a panic the voices were telling her to kill Bronston, that he had promised her that he would help her. He would make it better. He would cure her, and he lied. Instead, he did nothing but earn a paycheck. That was all doctors were good for, and that's all they do. To make money, leave ponies to suffer in pain, he would be punished for his lies, for his betrayal. It seemed like she was going to be listening to a record player, playing in reverse like she had in her teens. It made her feel uneasy, yet it made her so feel so powerful in some way. She wanted to punish him, because the voices were telling her the truth. She wanted to take that pencil and shove it right through his neck, forbidding him from ever speaking a lie again through his pathetic life. It took her a minute to realize that she, while in her comatose state, she had been reaching out onwards for a pencil. While she was still sane, she took her opportunity to leave and dart out of the room like a rocket. Despite Bronston objecting and trying to call Lyra back, never did turn back as she trotted like a mad horse. She fought to herself on how could she ever have such a sinister thoughts. The voices on her head yelled to her to turn back and give Bronston a punishment, but Lyra refused and ran on stop until she was out of the hospital and beyond. After succumbing to exhaustion, Lyra took a seat on the ground. She ended up just outside of Ponyville and now sat with fear and confusion. The dread on what just occurred in the hospital, even if she had not come back to reality any sooner, Bronson would have been bleeding to death from the pencil being impaled to the, his neck. Lyra then shivered out, not sure of what to think. 
All she could do was that if it had been bonbon instead of a pencil, the weapon had been one of knives used to cut vegetables. A tear escaped from her eye at the thought. Unsure of what to do, she now took deep breaths, small bits of sweat dripping from her muzzle. She had even attempted to find a solution to what had just happened. She had not just nearly killed some pony. She had no control over her actions as to what happened. Fear was all she could feel. She had never felt the urge to harm any pony, nor the urge to kill. So what was in Questria had caused this? And what more importantly, what could she do to stop it? Lyra then fought back of what Dr. Bronston stated, a psychiatrist. She didn't even dare take another chance of possibly killing some pony. That was then when it hit her like a bag of bricks. Did she dare return home? She would be endangering her beloved Bonbon. Bon, but what else did she need to go? Lyra swallowed hard. Where can I go? What? Where can I? What can I do? I'm going fucking crazy. How can I stop this? Lyra ranted, following her, slapping in her face, regarding her composure. Easy, Lyra. You can't be afraid of this. You are stronger than some voices speaking in your head of pure gibberish. You need to quit worrying about this much of his voice. It's the only way causing by a deep sleep deeper deportation. I think that's what Bonbon bon called it anyway. Whatever. I need to concentrate. I control me. Not a damn voice. It's all in your head, Lyra. Nothing more. With very a bit of confidence that the mayor could muster, she stood back up and made her way back to her home. Attempting to hold a smile as she walked, and that smile never came. Only a sense of fear. The sound of vegetables being chopped up was all Lyra could hear. And she crossed, closed the door to the house, steadily made her way into the home. Bonbon bon became aware of Lyra's presence, and already turned from chopping her upper vegetables to her beloved and unstable condition. She kept her distance, attempting to mutter out anything. So, what did the doctor say? Bonbon bon asked. Nothing. I didn't really know, Lyra replied bluntly. Out of all the stillness and silence of the house and Bon Bon's unsure expression, the whispers came back once again, but this time the message was more violent and a demonic tone that made Lyra's hooves nearly collapse. Punish her! She punished you! Now take your revenge! She's, she's a tramp who cheats behind your back with the cashier. She lies. She doesn't love you. She uses you for pleasure. She doesn't deserve life because she ruins the others. Destroy her. Shut up! She would never hurt me. You're lying! Lyra yelled in anger, not aware that she was yelling at the blank space in Bon Bon's eyes. You're a useless idiot in her eyes. She pretends that she likes it, but in her eyes, you are nothing but a waste. No, you're lying. You're lying! Lyra exclaimed, conflicted. She didn't even know or want to believe in the voice, but in ways, she did want to believe it. Why Bon Bon chose to stay with her, let alone marry her? Was she the mare who could even brush her mane without messing it up, or cause an even bigger mess? Had Bon Bon had only used her for pleasure and nothing more? Was this really cheating on her with Sunflower Spring? Sunflower was very supportive, and had asked Bon Bon to serve her, save her a glass, and he even winked at her when they left that day. Could it be true? The voice continued to antagonize her as these thoughts ran for her head. She's a user. You could see her when she's with that bitch, Sunflower Spring. She's all over her, touching her and kissing her every... Lyra! The voice was interrupted by Bon Bon, standing with a look of worry and confusion. Lyra came back to her senses, not aware that what she had just said. Lyra made eye contact, confused yet slightly angry. That same feeling of hatred had returned. As Lyra finally spoke, a look of anger expressed on her face. Do you? Lyra asked quietly. What? Bon Bon replied in confusion. Do you use me? Lyra replied in a hint of anger. Am I your free card of pleasure? Lyra? What are you talking about? Bon Bon asked, getting into the defensive stance, just in case if she had to do any drastic actions. I never used you for pleasure. You're the mayor I choose to love for the rest of my life. When we were at moments behind closed doors, it's for the reason why I married you and nothing else. Why were you thinking I used you? Lyra felt sincerity in those words, but the voice was telling her otherwise. Lyra attempted to shake her off the head, 
to use a freer voice, but it only made it worse. Allow me to show you that she's a dirty mare that uses you. Lyra tried to ignore the voice, antagonizing her thoughts, but it was quickly interrupted by a set of imagery. As Lyra felt her body enter a comatose state once again, all she could do was see an image of Bonbon bon kissing and intimately touching Sunflower Spring. At first, she didn't even think twice of it that it was real, but it was the imagery that went longer. Lyra came conflicted, seeing the imagery and seemed real. It then only grew more real, the imagery then faded back to reality, where Lyra could hear Bon Bon speaking to her. But next to her was Sunflower Spring, with a look of seductiveness all over her face. Lyra blinked twice just to make sure she wasn't seeing things. But Sunflower was both there at times, French kissing, caressing her tongue on Bonbon's neck. Tears filled Lyra's eyes as she watched Sunflower Spring continue her dirty deeds, saying something in the process. Move aside, you dumb bitch. She's mine, Sunflower claimed violently. She's always been mine. That made Lyra's anger rise as she leaked tears and yelled out in fury. Get off of her, you dirty tramp! Lyra commanded, lunging forward only to hit nothing but air. At least that was what Bonbon saw. Lunging out of the way, she watched as Lyra continued to fight some invisible force that she couldn't see. She wasn't sure of what to do, afraid that if she approached Lyra, she might put herself in danger. She didn't want to hurt Lyra, unless she had to, and kept her defensive posture. She neared Lyra, growling in frustration in the wall. Lyra! Bonbon yelled. Lyra ignored her, Continuing to tell at the wall, she had no choice but to get Lyra's attention by pulling her attention from the wall or whatever she was yelling at. Bonbon reached out her hoof and tapped Lyra's shoulder. The second contact was made and Lyra stopped yelling, but instead turned slowly where she was eye to eye with Bonbon. Bonbon felt uncomfortable, looking at the yellow bloodshot eyes from the mare staring at her, a full of tears and pure anger. You... You broke the promise you made to me, Lyra yelled, lunging violently out in Bonbon. Bonbon bon bon managed to dodge Lyra just in time, watching as Lyra flailingly went onto the wall and to the other side of the kitchen. Lyra wasn't giving up easily, turning forward towards Bonbon bon again, sliding a large knife out of its slot and into the knife set holder. Lyra, what are you talking about? Bonbon bon pleaded, with confusion and sadness audible. Don't play dumb, you unfaithful woman. You never loved me. It's always that cashier's sunflower. Lyra violently claimed. You just stood there while she kissed your neck. What kind of a mare were you were to stand while your heart was ripped in half? Lyra, sunflower isn't here. I've never slept with her. We're just friends and nothing more. Bonbon bon pleaded out, not wanting to get defensive with her skills as special ancient sweetie drops. I love you and only you. Please put the knife down and let me help you. Lyra paused holding the knife's tip on outward, her motionless before responding, You want to help me? Then join your little friend in Tartarus. Lyra then ran forward, and with the aim put into Bonbon bon in the wall, she wasn't stopping. Bonbon bon abandoned all the attempts to talk sense into Lyra and escorted and resorted to defending herself. Bonbon bon caught the knife, feeling it cut into her flesh a tiny bit, but nothing hurt worse than the pain that she had felt in her heart Lyra pushed forward hard, but Bon Bon had the upper hoof, kicking the blade out of Lyra's gasp. Falling to the floor, Lyra attempted to more one more lunge, but was stopped by a kick to the liver, immediately causing her to lose her breath. Before she could recover, Bon Bon finished the assault with a spinning kick to Lyra, felt her temporal lobe, knocking her out instantly. Bon Bon sobbed as she watched as Lyra fell to the floor unconscious. She wanted to vomit, but instead she proceeded to get Lyra to a controlled environment. I'm sorry, but you left me no other choice, Bonbon bon said through sobs, landing a soft kiss to Lyra's temporal lobe on the left, where she had kicking her. Please forgive me for this. When Lyra woke up, her head felt like it had been struck by one of Big Mactosh's hooves during apple bucking season. During a serious headache, her version was blurry. She even made an attempt to look around, unaware of where she was. The last thing she remembered, she was strangling Sunflower Spring in the kitchen before she felt a nasty strike to her left temple. 
It was then back up in her awakening in this strange place. That was when her panic began to stir into a hive of angry bees. Her eyes burst open and she attempted to move, but quickly she was stopped by something. Lyra spun her head upward now into full panic mode and only grew more panic as she saw her hooves were then strapped and completely restricted. Her heart was then started to struggle and attempt to free her hooves. She had no idea where she was or who had put it there. Her memories were too foggy to even remember what had happened from before everything went to black as her heart rate increased in a stir of progressing panic. A door opened from behind her, entering a female nurse. Lyra, calm down, the nurse said, urging Lyra to listen. You are only being restrained here so you don't cause harm to yourself or anyone. You are safe here. Lyra didn't seem anything malish about this nurse, so she did as the nurse instructed, calming down. Where am I? How did I get here? Lyra asked. You're safe. You were brought here by your mare friend due to drastic reasons, the mare said comfortably. Lyra felt her heart drop, seeing that she had no memory of doing anything to Bon Bon, only attacking Sunflower Spring. Oh, Celestia, is she hurt? Did, did I attack her? Tears had began to form in Lyra's eye sockets as she stared at the nurse with desperation. Despite some minor cuts, your mare friend is fine, the nurse reassured. But Lyra couldn't help but release the tears. Celestia, what have I done? Lyra shuddered. How could I? I promise I never harm her. The nurse interrupted, snapping Lyra out of her state of shock. Miss Heartstrains, I'm going to have to ask you to remain calm. An instructed nurse turning her head towards the door where two buff stallions stood. Tell her she's awake. Lyra didn't know what to think of what the nurse's words. She gently releases Lyra's hooves from the straps, causing Lyra's sense of insecurity to falter. She felt safe, yet she was disgusted with herself. Even if it was only minor cuts, she had hurt her beloved Bon Bon, and that made her sick to her stomach. She wiped her eyes free of any remaining tears, and then slowly stood up in all four of her hooves. Feeling slightly dizzy, the nurse assisted in helping Lyra stand up straight and take careful steps. Her hooves felt like they had no support, so each step seemed like taking forever for, to Lyra. But eventually she managed to regain the strength that she had been missing, feeling confident that Lyra could walk alone. The nurse released Lyra, staying close to her in case if Lyra wasn't fully able to support herself. After a few minor struggles, Lyra was able to walk steadily by herself again. Now that Lyra had the chance to take her own surroundings, she found herself some sort of a large shell with completely only a bed, sink, and toilet. At first glance, she would have assumed it was a prison cell. But unlike prison cells, this place was the more clean and welcoming. It was wide open, and very large pixie glass on the wall, and the side door for the staff to enter through from the other side. What is this place? Lyra asked. A containment cell, a nurse confirmed. Don't worry, it's not designed for criminals or mentally ill ponies. Then what is it designed for? Lyra asked in a shaky voice. If I'm not a criminal or a mentally ill patient, then what am I? This one is mainly designed for quarantine patients, the nurse explained. When you were brought here, your mare friend explained that you've been acting all you were all delusional, attacking things that were not even there, and claiming you were seeing things that were not even there. You are being kept here until we can be sure you are sane again, and then you're stable both in your mind and body. Reality hit Lyra like a ton of bricks. Not that she knew that her voice in her head had fooled her, and that Sunflower was really just an illusion. She was clueless as to what was causing this. Whatever it was unexpected voice had come from, it was powerless to stop it. And of course the statement, the same distorted whisper, caress for her thoughts. Again, Lyra immediately objected. Get out! Leave me alone! Lyra objected, alerting the nurse. Heartstrings, what's wrong? The nurse asked. It's back! The voice that made me attack Bon Bon! It's telling me to attack you! To kill you! To sneak out Bon Bon and finish the job! Lyra confirmed, beginning to leak back tears. The nurse stared in bafflement, watching as Lyra continued to struggle as she was shaking her head violently. Lunging herself towards the closest wall, the nurse intervened, catching Lyra right before she hit the wall. 
Lyra, I need you to calm down, the nurse ordered, as Lyra continued to growl with her grasp. If you don't, I'll have no choice but to restrain you. Lyra just growled, continued to fight off against the nurse, not holding back. The nurse attempted to hold Lyra, but all the strength was anything unlike that she ever experienced with patients in the past. But she had no choice but to call for assistance. She grabbed onto her radio and sent in the transmission. I need assistance. Patient has gone hostile. Repeat, I need assistance. It didn't take long for the same two buff stallions to rush back in their room and quickly rush into action. One of them grabbed Lyra in a tight grip, while the other one quickly grabbed in the syringe and inserted it into Lyra's neck. The sedative acted fast. The stallion gripping onto Lyra felt her body become heavier and heavier, until she was dead weight. Lyra had been put into a temporary sleep, so while the window of safety was open, the stallions then carried Lyra back to the bed and strapped her down, making it impossible for her to cause harm to any pony. The nurse breathed heavily from the fight against Lyra. She then looked up at the stallions with worry in her eyes. Get the cell contained as fast as possible, the nurse said. No outside contact is to be allowed until we can get this under control. Order an E. E G J G. We need to get her brainwave activity under examination immediately. The stallions followed her orders, and with the nurse leading, walked out of the cell. Lyra walked up once again, her head feeling fuzzy from her vision, only to discover that she couldn't move. She struggled for a minute until she heard a voice coming from the speaker's room. Miss Heartstreams, please remain calm, the voice said behind the speaker. Your brainwaves are currently being monitored, so please do your best to cooperate. It will help us determine what is causing you to be hostile towards others. Suddenly, Lyra understood what that deep voice of a male stallion was referring to. A large number of small electrodes were attached to her head, and the most active parts of her brain being restrained, she had no choice but to follow. All right, I'll try, Lyra agreed. Very good, the doctor replied. Now we need you to tell us when you start to hear this voice you said that causes you to turn hostile. It may help us determine how to approach to cure you. All right, Lyra agreed, wanting the advice, the voice to come. Ten minutes passed, and still nothing came. Lyra was confused and unsure of why the voice had gone quiet, when normally it was active any other time. Miss Heartstrings, are you holding back? The doctor asked. If you are... You don't have to worry. Your room is contained and you are unable to cause any harm to yourself or any pony. I swear I'm not, Lyra confirmed. I don't understand. It's normally active, but it's been completely silent. Lyra fought herself for a minute. Then she realized that what was missing, that always triggered the voice. That was when she knew what she had to do. Bring me Miss Bonbon, Lyra stated. I can guarantee it will trigger the voice. Miss Heartstrains, we have been given no contact order. Therefore, we cannot allow any pony near you. It doesn't have to be a direct contact, just outside the glass. Please, it's the only way to trigger the voice. A moment of silence was followed. Then the same male voice came over the speakers again. Very well, you are only allowed to see her and speak to her when May through, but that's all we can allow. The doctor finalized. That's fine, Lyra agreed preparing for what could be the most difficult confrontation. Hearing a door open from outside, and feeling her bed rotated upwards towards an angle where she could see through the glass. The sound of the hooves approaching imitated from the outside glass as Lyra took a deep breath. Bonbon bon came into view, what looked like a slow pace, stopped and looked inward toward the glass. At the first glance of Lyra's condition, Bonbon bon gasped in a mixture of shock and sadness, seeing her beloved restrained and mentally exhausted. Her horn had been established with magic restricting device. Her fur, mane, tail was a mess, puffy bloodshot eyes, and screamed tiredness. She felt as if her heart dropped at the slight, barely hair holding back any urge to cry, as Lyra made eye contact. Hello, Bonbon, bon, Lyra said. Lyra? Bonbon bon stumbled at her own words, trying to find something to say. I don't know what to say except why. Why did you attack me? Force me to hurt you? Why, Lyra? Bonbon bon had begun to sob saying those words. 
wanted an explanation as to why those recent events had occurred. I, I don't know. I don't know! Lyra objected, feeling her emotions start to take over. All I know is that it started the night after our anniversary. It came out of nowhere and started as a mild whisper, and I thought it was just that wine, but now that's not the case. I just wanted to go away. I want things to go back to normal. Lyra had begun to shed tears through desperation of escaping this Tartarus. That's why I brought you here, Lyra, so these ponies can help you, and things can go back to normal, Bonbon bon assured calmly. Lyra then shook her head. No, Bonbon, bon, things will never go back to normal, Lyra claimed, causing Bon to fall in confusion. The day we were wed, I promised to protect you, to be by your side through sickness and health, to never harm you. But I broke that promise by attacking, nearly killing you. Lyra, you weren't yourself. You were something else. That pony that attacked me wasn't the mare I wed. It wasn't you. That doesn't excuse the fact that maybe if I didn't tell you about the voice, Lyra confessed, maybe then this could have been prevented. Maybe if I wasn't such a damn idiot, I could have prevented putting you in danger. But instead, I ignore all the possibilities and nearly ended up killing you. Bonbon bon couldn't deny anything. Everything Lyra had said was true. I can't control it. The voice in my head forces me into a comatose state where I can't control anything I do. I nearly caught, killed Dr. Bronston that day in the hospital. I nearly committed a murder, Bonbon, bon, Lyra claimed, crying for her words. But with you, the voice is different. It told me to punish you, that it, you cheated on me with Sunflower Spring, and the truth is, I believed in it. It showed me an illusion of her kissing and licking your neck. I believed it like a bucking idiot. Lyra, don't blame yourself, Bonbon said with sadness in her voice. But it is my fault. I had no choice but to believe in or ignore it. I believed it instead of trusting the one I love. I chose to let it control over me. Lyra sobbed for a moment. Then it continued to speak. Bonbon, bon, I broke one of the promises I wore to my dying breath. On the day we were bonded for an eternity, I promised to trust you no matter what. I broke something scared, and I had no pony but to blame. But myself, voice, or no voice, is. Bonbon bon felt her heart skip a beat. Lyra was right. Everything she had said was true to its word. There was nothing she could say. Otherwise, she would have to be lying to herself. If I can't even trust the one I love most... Moreover, some voice in my head, then how can I protect you? The answer is, is that I can't. I can't even protect or trust myself. That's why I brought you here, Lyra, Bonbon bon said nicely, to cure you and help you. You are being too hard on yourself, and you're blaming yourself. Bonbon, bon, stop lying to yourself, Lyra snapped. You know what I'm saying is true, and you can't deny it. Bonbon bon hung her head, knowing Lyra was right. If I can't protect you, then our bond will never last, Lyra stated, trying to start to tear up. When all this started, the voice came and when I was you, and only then I was with you. It will never stop. It will only progress until my nightmares become reality. I may not remember them, but they always have one thing in common. You. That's the last thing I can remember. And now I see it. These nightmares are what they became reality. As long as they are there. As much as it pains me. To save me. For me to protect you. And you have to let me go Bon Bon. Bon Bon's blood ran cold. After those words were spoken. A pain of shiver ran through Bon Bon's entire body. Standing and staring in shock. Tears began to flow from her eyes. She could hardly speak. As she nearly collapsed from the impact of pain she received. What? Bonbon bon said in sadness, feeling her heart faint. Lyra, don't say that. Please, th th there must be another. Bonbon bon couldn't form the words, completely shocked and lost. She was hoping that this was a dream. At any moment she'd wake up and be next to her Lyra, kissing her awake. She waited and waited, but her eyes never opened up to comfort on the bed. They only remained open to the set of Lyra, restrained on the bed. Lyra, I love you. You're my beloved. The, the mare I chose to spend my eternity with, Bonbon bon said shakily. 
The truth, I killed Lyra on the inside, almost as if it did with Bon Bon, but for her beloved, for her beloved's safety, for both their lives, this had to be done. Lyra began to sob from the pain of their burning heart, and then it spoke back. I love you too, and always will, but to save both of us, you have to let me go. Lyra spoke for her sobs. It's the only way, and as much as it hurts, but promise me one thing, Bon Bon. When you leave, you will not look back. You will walk out and never come back to this place. Promise me. Bon Bon continued to sob, looking at Lyra with tear-filled eyes. I can't. There must be another way to stop this. A way for us to live our lives. The way we swore on to the day we were wed. I just can't. I can't just walk away from you. Not like this. There must be a way for both of us to live happily. There must. Bon Bon stumbled again realizing that she was once again lying to herself. On the stir of Bon Bon lying herself, she collapsed onto the floor, with only her knees holding her up. She broke down for the last time, releasing a bit of emotion that she left in her inside of her entire body. Lyra just watched and stared and hurt with her heart, awaiting for the final moment that she never ever fought to see her beloved Bon Bon again. She swallowed hard, watching as Bon Bon stumbled slowly back up, onto all four of her hooves. Bonbon bon gave Lyra one final look before saying one last thing. I promise, she stated, touching her hoof to the glass. We love you. Well, I love you. Bonbon bon then pulled her hoof from the glass, causing Lyra to feel as if that action had ripped her heart out from her chest. With that, Bonbon bon turned away from the glass wall and walked out, not taking her eyes off of the beloved. Once Lyra was out of her sight, as much as she wanted to turn around, she just kept her mind that she had made a promise that she would keep. She walked and walked and walked until she exited out of the sealed door to that wing of the ward, never looking back. Once outside, Lyra was sure Bon Bon was gone far from her life and she didn't hold back. She let out all of her emotions she had left inside escape in a fit of pure agony.